Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'm bringing this uh, meeting to order. Uh, regular meeting order for December the 5th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the December 5th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Just a note. Um, absent tonight with uh, permission, Councilor Bobic, Powell, and Boychuk. And um, I see that uh, our guest, uh, Dominga Kumpama, must be attending our next meeting. So. <clears throat> Number three, result of the minutes of the November 21st, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to six, 6.1. Result of the letter from the Honorable Ian Bushy, Minister of Municipal Relations, dated November 21st, 2023, be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Sorry, I have a discussion. The infrastructure amount uh, mentioned there, the $310,000 and change, is that on par with what we've received in the past, or is this more? This is less? this is due. This yeah. is something that was a, a commitment that we had in the, earlier in the year, and we'll have to have some discussion about this as well. Yeah, this comes with an agreement. We have to choose a project, and there's conditions. Okay, so this has not been offered before in the past, and is what I'm hearing. Yeah, correct. All right, thank you. Further discussion. All in favor. We'll have to bring that up in one of our maybe next week's cow or budget, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Six point two. Result of the building and demolition permits sixty three twenty three through sixty six twenty three with a total estimated value of two hundred and forty five thousand dollars be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion. Councilor White. I see the two uh, demolitions having no charge. How does that work? Uh, that's declaring that there's no value. <coughs> okay. But the, 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 the demolition must take place. It must have cost somebody some money. The permit, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, there'd be a permit. Yeah, there's cost to demolish, yeah. What you're seeing there is the value of the building or construction okay. permit. All right. Thank okay. you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Seven point, oops, sorry, I'm going too fast here. Seven, uh, seven point one. <clears throat> Do we have any report there? None at all, I, okay. I understand that he's uh, just back from holiday, so we'll see it in the next meeting. Yeah. Result, uh, seven point two, result of the, uh, sorry, result of the protective services report for 2023, uh, November be received, moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Under animal control, it references a dog bite and two dogs impounded. What were the results of the two dogs being impounded and also the dog bite? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to get the bylaw officer to respond. Please. For the discussion, all in favor? carried. 7.3. Result of the quarterly recreation report for December the 5th, 2023 be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor White. Director Clausen, I believe you have some comments before. Any questions? I do. In Mountain <clears throat> Parks, there's a typo. It says receiving complaints should actually read receiving compliments. So changes for, the whole kind of meaning of that section. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Further discussion? Our Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, Ms. Gosson, I was wondering if you could add in future and future reports, like to your report, um, 
grants, like applied for grants received and the status of it so that we don't lose track of any uh, grants that are applied for or Sure, or I have a whole spreadsheet that I can attach to this. Right, or as an addendum. So sometimes things get lost in the wash or we think we applied for something that was last year yeah. we've talked about it but never actually did it. Uh, but just sort of keep things like uh, almost like a chronological thing and status report for the yep. most time. Great suggestion, thank you. Okay. Good idea. Thanks. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 7.4. Resolved that the November 20, 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Councillor Medwood. Um, who is responsible for Handy Van? What do you mean by that? It's under. It's 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 under Protective Services, but I I help with Chief Rochek. Okay. Uh, so, who is it if I wanted to learn more about, do I need to meet with? In regards to what? Uh, the granting, what is allowable, not allowable for use of the handy van through the granting. Okay. Uh, you, you can have a discussion with myself and the CFO regarding the finances, how it's funded, what we have to do in order to receive that funding. Okay. And you should involve the chair as well. Chair of Protective Services. All right, that's Whitey. Okay. Councilor White. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, Council Report. We'll start with Councilor Medwood. Uh, well, we attended AMMs last week, so uh, I have a few takeaways from there to share. Uh, one of the big ones was that our new government is looking at improving health care, but what I was impressed with is it's not just staffing hospitals with nurses and doctors. They also consider it looking into and assuring there's adequate home care services, nurse practitioners and EMTs able to practice to their full potentials, uh, transportation such as handy van being more accessible or offering shuttle services and affordable to our seniors and those with disabilities. Uh, medic planes and transports ensuring airports are maintained and funding support quality of life to allow aging gracefully in one's own home as well as more medical services available locally. So it's all encompassing. It's not just staff within the actual medical facilities so that um, has me looking uh, forward to seeing what the next four years brings us and uh, another takeaway is just about everything can be linked to quality of life so we need to make sure we're using appropriate vocabulary when we're seeking funding in any area and drawing those connections to quality of life in our community uh, collaborating with neighboring municipalities for recreation, economic development services uh, in our areas where landfill and lagoon are two big projects I think that uh, are going to be coming up for us soon. Uh, I attended the municipal and northern, uh, uh, northern relations, yes, um, breakaway session and a couple takeaways from there that I thought were important to bring back is they were talking about their partnerships with municipalities. So the Building Sustainable Communities Grants is a, um, they had, uh, I think it was the mayor of the Reeve, of Boys of Maine, um, Morton area. They spoke to their collaboration with the province in their funding for their aquatic center. Uh, they received funding through the BSC grant program for their feasibility plan. Phase one, they got $300,000 to build the building, and phase two was $300,000 for the outdoor pool aquatic center. So the one suggestion there and takeaway is design based on phases so you can maximize grant and potential in consecutive or, um, well not necessarily consecutive, but over a course of time. And they're also looking to put in another application for what they're going to consider phase three, which is developing a campground around that aquatic center. So 
something to maybe uh, consider with regards to our new arena project and if we can do it in phases of some nature that might be a way to help us maximize some potential funding there if it's available the other one that was spoken to was um, Russell Binsgarth and I believe I've got written down here that it was a municipal service delivery improvement program and theirs was focused on waste management so they received $75,000 for their landfill updates between Russell or Emma Russell and Binscar, there's now two transfer stations with one active landfill, which they made some improvements on. Their gar garbage collection went from uh, being a weekly service to a bi-weekly service. And in doing that, they were able to start a green collection program. So one week they're collecting garbage, the next week they're collecting grass clippings, leaves, uh, in which they started a compost out at the landfill and they used that for municipal use and purposes, reducing some of the costs there. They have a recycling program done bi-weekly and they did notice up to $10,000 in cash savings already seen within a very short and quick period of time. And one of the big takeaways uh, they spoke to was their change in viewing of waste management and viewing it more from a profit loss perspective and that kind of changed the whole way they uh, do things so definitely I think we should be reaching out to them and maybe uh, getting some more info on seeing what we can apply here I attended the session on the short-term rentals uh, Airbnbs the Airbnb is willing to work with regulators and government. They're able to provide aggregate data from the area that's collected, such as why people are coming into the area, what amenities they're using, that type of thing, uh, which can be shared with the muni municipal government for economic development purposes. They recommend and suggest using simple, straightforward, and easy to follow regulations. They're also willing to be involved in connecting the government with Airbnb hosts in the local area. And they will support regulations. So if we do get some regulations in place, they're on board with supporting that as long as they're simple, straightforward, and easy to follow. And they do uh, run some third-party independent studies and in one they did, it shows no discernible impact to short-term rentals um, like hotels and things like that in the local area. That uh, Another takeaway from that session was, uh, I believe it was... Uh, You're coming close to time. <laughs> Harrison Park. They spoke to focusing on some zoning <coughs> and permitted versus conditional use and under conditional use there can be an application process. They can also be subject to potentially commercial business and or accommodation taxes and to possibly implement a demerit system. So if there are uh, complaints to short-term rentals within residential communities, there's, you can always deny or revoke a, a permit. Uh, my, I do have a couple other takeaways, but I suppose I can save those. Um, one I do want to mention now would be the connection and partnerships with frontline municipal and provincial governments. So frontline services, we as municipal government are kind of the front line for the provincial government. Staff is a front line for administration and councils. Rate payers are a front line to our administration and councils. So we need to be listening to our rate payers we need to be making sure that when we are, for example, putting out surveys and looking for feedback, that we're actually taking that feedback into consideration when we are amending or updating our bylaws and policies, because not doing so, that action speaks louder than the words, and the action is saying that we're not listening to you and we don't really care what you have to say. So by taking in feedback, and not implementing it into actions of change is not going to fare well with continuing to have people provide feedback and work with us for, for 
progressive changes. Okay, I'm going to call you a time, just reminding sure. that you stick to the timeline and the points. Um, council does do uh, all those in every aspect and uh, as we possibly can, so um, I find that that might be a little bit of grandstanding, so that's not permitted, council wide. Yeah, <clears throat> like the rest of us who are at AM, uh, some of the highlights are meeting with the Minister of Sport uh, and the discussion on the possibilities with the arena and the legacy committees working together. So I, I felt uh, pleased that he was willing to listen and he seemed sincere and using the arena as a possibility of recruiting doctors and nurses and other medical professionals because it's attracting to our community. We also met with the Minister of Economic Development, Mo Moses, and uh, we talked a lot. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Poole, for your information on LP and SPL and sharing the importance of that, those particular companies and others with our community. And he too seemed uh, very willing to listen. We met with D Division, the RCMP uh, command, and uh, concerns about crime. And uh, part of that reason we'll be following up next week, I think it is, uh, Mr. Poole, with uh, D Division staff about trying to be more precise on where we're going with crime. So we continue that work. Uh, one of the things that popped up there, I thought the importance of bringing Crown attorneys to the table again to re-emphasize where we are in this world with that regard. Uh, I think the networking is huge, meeting the new MLAs, new cabinet ministers, uh, meeting us and uh, having the packages that the mayor and his team and the administration have given each MLA what we are, where we're coming from, who we are, what we want, what our asks are, and some paths. I think that's really huge. Uh, the mayors and reefs from other communities, the councillors sitting having coffee with those guys, learning to work together. The mayor is sitting and having coffee with the uh, the premier, the, the prime minister, one of the prime minister's executive assistants. You can't do that over the phone. So those things are important. Uh, the breakaway sessions were awesome, as always. The one that really struck home to me was AI, artificial intelligence, and the potential uh, to do uh, really, really wonderful things and obviously some negative things. And uh, CEO Poole tells me that they're, we're ahead of a lot of other communities in that regard, but we're continuing to look at it. And uh, we met with the recycle team from government, and they have uh, advised me we're in the soon to get 1,000 plus uh, recycle bins of different sizes, whatever we decide we want. So uh, good all around. The guest speakers were exemplary. Uh, General Walt from Winnipeg, uh, team building. I'm a big fan of team building. And the other gentleman with artificial insemination. Artificial, artificial intelligence. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you're right. Yeah, I same thing. Oh, yeah. Not quite the same thing, but uh, I know where you're going on that one. So, thank you. Uh, Cal, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, yeah, so a lot of similar things, uh, but started off the week um, on November 22nd, 23rd, uh, with some member of councils regarding the uh, meeting with, uh, I guess, legal representatives. Uh, with the beneficiary case that we have ongoing, so hopefully we should hear soon uh, as a result of the events that transpired last week on that. So, um, and then with the rest of the team uh, last week, uh, 28th to 30th at the AMM in Brandon, um, I wish to thank AMM and our district director for hosting that event. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to meet ministers to uh, various people. So, uh, and then also hold on, host a valuable trade show for us to see different partners and suppliers and vendors out there. So that's uh, a great, but uh, uh, one of the meetings we had with uh, the Minister of Sport and Culture, um, and when we talked about uh, our needs, especially with the arena, was uh, one of his first questions is, have we been in contact with the federal government and the department? So that's one of the directions he pushed us towards too was to close that loop and have those discussions along with uh, continuing to have discussions with his own department and that but uh, very concerned or suggestive leading towards the cultural aspect in that building uh, which was a wink wink nudge nudge type deal um, where there could be some more potential funds available for that project from either his or the provincial uh, government or the federal so um, RCMP D, D Division meeting was great. Uh, they weren't surprised how our package that the administration prepares for us, um, especially their uh, secretary there. She stopped typing and just followed along in our booklet so she didn't have to take a whole lot of notes. Um, a lot of the stuff that we had presented to them, while well, were also relative to the meeting with the Minister of Justice that will be upcoming. 
Um, so it was repetitive and when we uh, had the discussion regarding a potential project that we had going forward, they presented a potential funding solution of the 30% of that project. So, um, so as we get more information with that and clarification to make sure that that is actually true the case, uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, again, big networking uh, issue or not issue uh, event with that. So big shout out to uh, Mr. Quinn Ferris from. The Prime Minister's, um, Prime office, Minister's office. Deputy Prime Minister's office. Um, he kept us up way too late one night, but uh, Mr. Poole had a second run at him for the second night where I ran out of steam. Um, but uh, very good connection, and I understand he's already contacted uh, this office to follow up on our points that we brought forward. So uh, a very good ally, uh, very uh, professional young gentleman from Manitoba, from Portage La Prairie, um, who is definitely in my time in uh, this, um, as a councillor for the town, been the actual first uh, representative from the federal government to actually reach out and participate with us on common goals. So, thank you very much to him for doing that. So, and then for, finally on AMM, uh, a lot of positive discussions uh, with both ministers and MLAs from both parties uh, through the networking. So, um, very. Uh, supplies to see that so and then uh, I also want to say thanks on a different note to the, the gentleman and Minister of Justice uh, from the Safer Communities and Neighborhood Act uh, for the work that they're doing in the community uh, it's a very positive approach things are starting to gain traction uh, we need to keep the ball rolling providing them with the information and continue working along with them on that um, so hopefully there's there um, and that is pretty much wraps it up but uh, the next upcoming period it's going to be a busy Two weeks for most of us here so uh, we'll <clears throat> leave it at that for now all right Thanks. well thank, thank you for that um for me uh veterinary board uh, meeting last night um board uh not uh, not an extensive meeting but we did have some good conversation one thing that i've noticed is that uh, our budget has been passed and it's not much different than in the pa past few years and our levies will remain the same for 2024 um, we're also able to take advantage of the large animal equipment uh, rebate that the province was providing here in the last uh, year. And so there's about a $75,000 uh, um, uh, advantage that we could take for some, re uh, sorry, for some upgrades at the vet. So that's a good thing. Um, AMM, <clears throat> firstly I have to say is, um, you know, I, I look forward to the fall convention every year because it's, it's a really important piece uh, of, if it's the learning of the breakout sessions or the networking or meeting people and, and learning that a lot of people are at the same as we are and at the same level. Um, I thank council for taking the time to meet with the ministers when I was not able to do so. I appreciate that and, and, and heading up all uh, those meetings uh, when I was busy with uh, my other AMM responsibilities. Um, I know I talked to some of the ministers and, and uh, you know, they heard from us and, and they've taken notes and we'll be speaking with them in the, in the next little bit again. Um, to Mr. Poole and the administration for preparing um, <clears throat> our booklet. And, and uh, you know, I, I was sitting in a, in a breakout session and, and listening to some of the comments and there was one of the persons sitting next to me and they, they seen the book and wanted to have a little peek at it so I let them do so and they were amazed and and, uh, and it really shows uh, the professionalism that we demonstrate when we go to AMM uh, conferences or meeting with ministers so we do thank our administration for taking the time and and of course not only administration but we're putting compiling all our information and putting it into a priority sequence so that we're not wasting time uh, with the ministers although no time is a waste but we're organized and we're making sure that we're staying on topic for the little time that we have with those individuals um, for me on AMM I was really excited to have my very first uh, board meeting and cabinet meeting uh, with the with the new government so that was pretty exciting and and um, it's pretty strict rules, if you want to say how we conduct ourselves, which has to be professional as well, and stay on topic and so on. But uh, what came out of that was one of the things, and everybody heard this too later uh, in the in the bear pit session. But 
um, how the government wants the AMM to be a part of Budget 2024 and, and be in that consultation, which has never, I don't think, ever happened ever in the history of, of AMM, at least not when I've been in there anyway. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to meeting with the new ministers. We've had, I've had an opportunity to meet with a few, the important ones that we want to say that right now, where we feel that um, we need to have their attention, and that's with uh, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Justice, uh, housing and so forth, but we'll have a chance to meet with them and if we have not already uh, We've had some communication with a few of them and uh, and I've also asked the, uh, the, the Minister of um, Justice to have a separate meeting with the four heads of council as well and uh, He knows that we're talking about crime the premier in that meeting did talk about the importance of you know clamping down on the crime drugs and so forth and where it's, you know, where this is all kind of heading out of and they're committed to that. So there's a lot of different things that are going to happen in the new year and I'm looking forward to hearing that. It was spoke a little bit about AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, I thought that was really interesting and there's so much I can't speak about it all because it's way beyond me, but, you know, we talk about, oh, you know, it's going to be in the future, we'll be dealing with it. We're living it now and it's just, it's rapidly coming and changing so, so much. And, you, you almost wish that you could bring these speakers back home with you so you can, you know, do a, a share with everybody because there's so much information that we can't uh, completely absorb and share, but there, there's a lot of takeaway that we had from that, uh, that presentation. And then the reti retired general and his leadership and, and listening is very important, and uh, he shared a lot of stuff that we'll take away from there. So. More stuff, but uh, that's it for me for the time being. But uh, I think each of you was able to have the, the time to go to AMM and see what the benefits of the whole thing, including the networking. And I want to mention actually in the networking piece that we did do, and is important because you know speaking with uh, Quinn Ferris from the de the uh, the assistant to the deputy prime minister's office on crime, and we've built a relationship with him, and we're we're slowly working with that and and we will see some results, I'm sure, soon. And then also, um, I met with the, man, the, uh, the mayor from Lloyd Minister, who has actually hooked us up with the, the, the mayor from North Battleford with some crime issues and, and, and having a, a summit in the new year on crime and, and these communities that have a large CSI that um, um, we're gonna be meeting together to discuss some of these issues and bring them forth on a, on a uh, combined a message to the federal and provincial governments. So anyway, that's it for me. Anything for you? Uh, yeah, just the, the work in regard to the AMM. We, we have established contact to the 15 communities that want to create a, a summit for the top crime severity index communities in Canada. Uh, so we will see where that goes, want to be a part of that. Uh, Mr. Ferris, uh, we have been in contact with him and sent him all the correspondence between us and the federal government. He wanted to review that. <clears throat> we will keep, uh, keep him updated on our status. Uh, and just on the resolution we just passed, uh, thanks to the provincial government for providing that rural strategic infrastructure fund, that's $39 million going to the municipalities. That You're right. It goes a long way. Minister Bushy <coughs> did make that announcement. Uh, just so council knows, we did send our information to the ministers we did not meet. Uh, Justice Minister Weeb, Transportation Minister Naylor, and Health Minister Asaguara. And for council's notes for the next Cal meeting, uh, just prepare for uh, direction on the accommodation tax, so we have some options ahead of us which we will be looking for direction. Uh, a proposal on the aesthetic bylaw to show council our evaluation tool that will go along with our, our property standards bylaw. And a protective services or chart uh, proposal as well, changes for that, so pretty big count meeting next week. Mm. And, and then just on a note, the municipal offers cleaning tender is being done so we'll review that next week as well. Okay. Any questions to see him pool on his report? If none, okay, eight eight point one. Resolve that the fee schedule for two thousand and twenty four be received and approved. 
Moved by Deputy Mayor Morial, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Um, I have, well, we have a few councilors away and there are a few uh, follow-up documents here regarding some questions on the fee schedule and I have some pertaining to the handyman in which I would like to maybe have an open discussion with council in um, our next Cal meeting because the feedback from the seniors is that it's too expensive. So I'd like us to maybe take a look at what we can do there with regards to those fees and also with the increase in those fees, where are the rates for a taxi cab and are we exceeding what it costs to the base rates for a cab or are we still on par with what the base rates for a cab are? But that's something I'd like to so what are you asking? Basically, I'm asking if we can table this until our next meeting. So you so want to make a motion can... to table? Yes, please. Okay. So do we have a seconder to table? There's no seconder. So then we'll move on. Um, dis further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just to further to that, uh, this we've already re reviewed this. Uh, Councillors that are present have had an opportunity to uh, uh, review this as this has been on the agenda for uh, a period of time already. Um, they have yet or have not made any concerns and if a councillor is not absent, business must still go on. Um, we have quorum and we have a resolution for the table. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, 7.3, oh. oh, this is, um, no. 8.2 years ago. I, yeah, I was going to go in here. Oh, my computer moved on me here, sorry guys and girls. Um, 8.2, result of the Swamp Valley Folk Festival being held on May the 2024 be declared a community event. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Midwood. Just uh, a note on this, I thought that we only had a limited number of community events that we could approve, but apparently uh, it's changed. Yes. Okay. Three. Sorry? Three? No, is it? No, they're, they they put it on the municipality to set those okay. parameters, and we have not done so, so it Thank you. would be um, Right. Uh, so, uh, discussion. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. We'll make sure that there's some, maybe some lutefisk or something at the <laughs> Folk Festival in 2024. I will skip your <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Resolve the Town of Swan River receive and approve the 2024 emerging, er, sorry, Emergency Measures Plan. Moved by Councilor Deputy Memorial, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just a thanks off, uh, first off to uh, our safety officer, uh, EMO, uh, Mr. Linick, for putting this together and updating it. It is a huge document that takes hours and hours of meticulous work uh, through it. So um, it's one of the better ones that I've seen uh, in my years of disaster preparedness. So thanks off to him and uh, I think we should support it. Okay. I call Mr. I appreciate the a little summary sheet that he also provides with what's actually been changed and what is still the same. Yeah. For those of us who this document is kind of up here and <laughs> over the head, it's nice to know that he gets right to the point. <laughs> no, you're right about that. It's always good to, you know, have it right to the point. But okay, so further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Unfinished business nine nine point one. Okay, so then this is okay. Yeah, right. So whereas the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center is currently operating with one hot water tank, and whereas it's recommended that the uh, Credit Union Aquatic Center operates with two hot water tanks to ensure continuous service, therefore be it resolved the Town of Swan River Recreation Department be authorized to expend 
$19,075.80 from the Recreation Reserve Fund to purchase a hot water tank and extended warranty from Swan the Paw Refrigeration and AC. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Uh, just a thanks to Director Clausen for the extra info that we requested last time. It's uh, helpful. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, just back to the resolution, I just want to make sure that it's worded right. Um, is it has the expenditure of 19,075.80 um, for the reserve fund for the hot water tank, and then it says, and it should say, and or plus the cost for extended warranty? Is that uh, from what I read in the documents, the extended warranty is not part of that? Correct, price. it's separate. So the resolution should uh, yeah. in plus include extended warranty cost and GST, PST. Plus instead of and? So, yeah. However you guys want to wordsmith that, but. If, if we're okay. going to go with the extended warranty, then the resolution should read plus extended warranty uh, and PST and GST. <clears throat> so we're just making an amendment? Yeah. Or correcting it? I think just correcting it is, is fine. Okay. I don't know. What do you need it? It's just refreshed. Okay. Do you, do you think that that should be an amendment then? or? Yes, we're amending the resolution. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a uh, uh, resolution to amend? Well, the, it's showing the amount is 19075.80, but in her uh, decision paper, it's saying that the uh, hot water tank is $17,843.80, permits and setup, and GST, PST included. Extended warranty is an additional $1,100 plus tax. So does that 19,000 not include? It does, yeah. yeah, now that you say that out, yeah. Because their quote included, sorry, I think I'm speaking out of No, here. go ahead. No, okay, um, their quote included their fees and their GST and everything, and then I had the separate quote for the extended warranty for the 1,100 plus the PST GST. Okay, so let's look at this thing. So, uh, a threat to expend $19,075 from the Recreation Reserve Fund to purchase a hot water tank uh, with, let's put, add the, with the cost of the extended warranty. Or maybe, or included. One of those, just so that it does say it does include the extended warranty. Purchase of a hot water tank, including the extended warranty. Yeah, that's what I got. So. Oh yeah, it's refreshed. Okay. So, all right. So to amend the, uh, you, you just need um, the proposed amendment and then a seconder. Okay. You don't need a separate resolution. To oh, it. I see. Just okay. So you're you're asking to amend it. Okay, I propose make a motion okay. to amend the resolution. And do I have a seconder? Councilor White. Okay. So that that's been approved. Now back to the resolution. Any further discussion? We'll call a vote on the amendment. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, what am I doing? Thank you. Uh, on the amendment, all in favor? Okay, it's carried. Then now back to the resolution. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Long way. <laughs> it's all about practice, right? Accounts uh, 10.1. Result of accounts as follows be here by approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30956 to number 31032, totally $475,720.26 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 31019 uh, was the wrong pay was voided and replaced by checks number 31024. Payroll accounts checks number 5388 to number 5392, totally $107,407.65 as listed on Schedule B. And direct deposits payments totaling like sorry $935 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposits payments totaling like 
$2,875.69 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion. Councilor Medwood. A couple questions. Uh, 30965 and 30966 uh, indicate car wash for sewer truck mishap. Um, what was the mishap? Uh, the operators were cleaning out septic tanks during a soccer game and the gauge on the tank misread and so they did fill up and since it's a fan unit, the spray out of the sewer truck covered their vehicles. So we, we paid for the cleaning of the vehicles. Fair enough. Amongst other things. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the other question was, um, give me one second to pull this up. So the 30994 for the up, back upright pro force, what exactly is that? And what was the uh, check number? Uh, 30994. I think that's so capital. 14,981 for... That was on the capital list last, last year, this year. It was a floor scrubber. Okay. For 15,000. And uh, we were able to get the floor scrubber for well under that and able to purchase three needed vacuum cleaners for under that original amount. Well done. Perfect. Further discussion? Councilor White. I know, uh, Mr. Poole, you're going to talk to your team about the Amazon purchases. They're not big numbers, but there's a couple there still. And, uh, an iPad case and some photography stuff. There are people in town that sell iPad cases, you know, and it's five, ten bucks. I'm sure they're saving a little, but yeah. I have a concern about that still. Okay. Do you have a question about the resolution? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas sections two, 365, 2 of the Municipal Act provides that a council may in it, in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which properties, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. Be it resolved that the designated year for which properties and arrears be offered for sale by auction be 2023 meaning all properties with outstanding taxes from the year 2022 or prior, and be it further resolved that in accordance with sections 363.1 of the Municipal Act, costs shall be actual costs incurred for each parcel listed for the 2024 tax sale plus administration fee of $50 as set forth in the Manitoba Regulation 5097, and be it further resolved that the 2024 tax sale be held Wednesday, September the 11th, 2024, at 2 p.m. in the Town of Swan River Committee Room, and the tax service be hired to manage the tax sale for the town during the fiscal year 2024. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.3. Whereas the town of Swanover used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252.1A of the Act, and where a sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $72,836.27. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding ta property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252 2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective January the 1st, 2024. Moved by <clears throat> Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Dr. Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
we have nothing to do in camera, so we're going to skip right down to members' privilege. And I will let Deputy Mayor Morio go first. Uh, yeah, so not a whole lot. Uh, just wanted to further say, besides the, the formal um, stuff we had at AMM, it was a great team building exercise for our team uh, to hang out in the after hours and uh, share some laughs and whatnot. But uh, I also want to thank uh, our His Worship, uh, Mr. Jacobson, here for uh, all the work that he and the rest of the team at AMM uh, did for facilitating that. And uh, uh, I know it takes a lot of time um, away from the team participating with it. And I know he was heartbroken for not uh, being able to join us on a lot of the adventures that we were on. But uh, the, the team uh, uh, did the community proud along with uh, um, the rest of uh, municipalities in the valley by uh, having some great discussions. So uh, I want to thank you personally for uh, and uh, on behalf of the rest of the council, they wish for being part of the, the uh, AMM team there and allowing for municipalities to uh, have those discussions because uh, it's not a great networking for our team and stuff like that, but uh, especially with other communities uh, for like the city of Thompson and the Army of Portage where we, we find uh, just through casual discussions um, a lot of the similar areas and where the openness to share um, projects or issues that they've had and dealt with or are working on so that we don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel on a lot of this stuff um, and then get tagged on to some of the linkages and discussions where like you you were saying with uh, the mayor from uh, Lloyd Minster and then with North Battleford um, unfortunately our our work as committee members and that will go up with these additional meetings and discussions but uh, hopefully in the end it will um, make our workload and solve a lot of the issues that we're solving. So, uh, so thank you very much to you and the AMM for bringing all the communities together for that. Thank you, and I'll pass on the words too, but I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Councillor White. First half, ditto. Uh, absolutely well run, and I, I can't emphasize enough these little packages. That's the package is you, you prepare and your team for, for each cabinet minister that meet what we are, who we are, what we're about, what our asks are, historical references. That that was referred to by many times, so thank you for that. Uh, miscellaneous one about sport fish being the fourth. We'll put 20000 bucks into the valley. Uh, I, I'd like to compliment uh, yourself, uh, Rec Director. I'm sure you had a lot to do with Whiskey Sipic and the Stamps playing hockey and a lot more work behind the scene for you and your team. So. I think that's a nice step when we have all our communities uh, working together in that arena. Uh, it was nice to see the G4 at the MM. All, all, all four, three Reeves and Mayor were there, so pleased with that. Uh, we talked again with the Dauphin and the Mayor and some of his councillors. We'll hopefully get together in the near future to talk about crime, how our two communities are working uh, collaboratively, how they're doing it. And I'm assuming we sent thank you letters to the heads of the department people who send us the money for those grants. We get a grant for thirty three hundred thousand dollars. It's got somebody's name on it. Do we send a thank you letter to say, "Oh boy, put it in the bank"? Ah, uh, well, we it would. It, no, I wouldn't say that it was theirs. I think we would thank the. Party. I, I, I it, it's the such a simple government. thing to do, sir. And yeah. you're, you're really, really good. I appreciate. Yeah, it. we can absolutely send it. Cost thank nothing. You letter to those Pete yeah. Smith, director of grant applications for swimming pools. We appreciate it. Pete Smith gets an application must out in the future. They're the only flippant guys that said thank you. It, it, it's so big. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember. I also concur with uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. What I didn't get to speak to earlier was I got to attend the uh, meeting with the Minister of Environmental. This environment? Okay. Minister Mr. Moses. And in addition to our talking points, CAO Pool had a great conversation around EV chargers and has got a little list of resources and contacts for potential funding and or grants to follow up with. I got to speak to food cyclers and I asked what their government was going to be doing to supporting municipalities that are looking to provide waste reduction initiatives. So I would also like to see some follow-up in a CAL meeting with regards to the food cycler so that council can have the opportunity to kind of discuss it. 
see what direction we want to potentially go with it so that we can follow up with the environmental minister and see if they are willing to provide some sort of subsidy to help our ratepayers reduce the cost of those machines if that's the direction we want to try going with our uh, pilot project first and roll out. And uh, happy to hear that our MTI followed up for a meeting. I uh, did ask the big snow removal question in the bear pit, so, and I know we had that in our talking points for that minister, so hopefully we can discuss that in our upcoming meeting. And then last but not least, December 9th is the Red Apple Toys for Us drive. So if you stop by the Red Apple, have a toy, uh, drop, drop it off, the, that's going to be going on from 10 to 4 this Saturday. New or used? I believe they want new. Yeah, sure. So for council, if we haven't provided to our little bin here, I think we kind of took a pool. But uh, for the, anybody in the public... You really um, raise a lot of money in that pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anybody in the public listening, just yeah. a reminder, December 9th, Red Apple, 10 to 4, new toys accepted. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Director Klauser. Uh, maybe just two quick things. So the Swan Valley Community Foundation banquet is tomorrow. So we're going to go there and receive our grant. I don't know. I've never been to one, so... I don't know if anybody else goes, so that's tomorrow. And also further in my parks summary there, we've been working with the Elks Foundation and their grant, and we were able to order that playground equipment nice. this year. And we've got, uh, we're gonna be um, doing a bit of a blitz in the spring, looking for some volunteers and stuff to help get that one, and then the Kinsmen up this summer as our priority work this summer. They didn't get around to doing it. Um, we were able to pick the colors for the playground equipment, so we picked purple and gold for the Elks, so. Perfect. Nice. Good That's job. All. Cool. Okay. Uh, CFO Ganita. Thank you, report. Okay, thank you. Uh, CAO Pool. Uh, yeah, I did, earlier I didn't mention uh, the value of the uh, MTCC, the Control Center Tour, uh, that we visited at the medical center in Brandon. So the, we are requesting data on, on more medevac information between uh, Swan River and basically the south, but uh, in addition to the, the data that we're getting from the local EMS, but that tour is really interesting. and took away uh, the hard work that those people do, I guess, and, and what we pay for us, because we do pay for that's a service uh, on our expense line, but good to know how the iron work was run. Uh, and I just wanted to give council a kudos for continuing to support that all of council attend AMM. I know we didn't get 100% this year, but due to uh, approved reasons, but uh, as long as we continue to show that front, I do believe that's noticed. Uh, and and then just to state on the the networking, like well, all I've always said that when we go to these things, the networking is invaluable meeting people from like Kyle Henderson, the CAO of RM of Portage, to Tina Petro, the Deputy Mayor of Airdrie. We have those contacts now and uh, and we can rely on information from all over Western Canada. So it's we're just continuing to grow our, our networking uh, body. That's it. Okay. On that, you know, and I was going to mention a little bit more earlier, but the networking and I think about the very first AMM that I ever went to. And <clears throat> it kind of started from there and you just grew and you met different people and, and made these different connections. And, and I think just in the last six years, maybe we've seen some of the biggest movement we've ever seen with, um, with uh, people that we can connect with and have the common, uh, you know, issues or if you want to call it that or, or just getting ideas from, you know, the deputy mayor from Airdrie, Airdrie, her and I had some really good talks. I hosted their their uh, their municipality uh, or their munici Alberta municipalities at my table during the AMM, and we had some really good talks as well as uh, Suma and also Sarm from Saskatchewan. So we had some really good connections there, and with that networking, I want to talk about 
uh, the government has named um, liaisons to different parts of the province, and, and there's one for Western Manitoba, uh, who will be off the snout of uh, Brandon, but also they named another one for the southern area, and that uh, is the former mayor from Morton, his name is Brandon Burley, and Brandon and I have become very good friends, and I went up to him and I said, who do I go to, you know, do we come to you or what? And he goes, you, you come to me for a little while if you want, you know, so um, again, that's just making sure that you have some good, you know, people to talk to, bring your issues forward. So I look forward to, you know, uh, I'm sure with the, the the Brandon office too, but Brandon Burley being a, a great guy and helping the government in this transition. And then the last thing I want to say is that the blue ribbon panel that was announced by the province and, uh, uh, you know, headed up by one of our own board members from the from the AMM and, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Phillips is, is an excellent guy. I'm looking forward to being a part of that as well. And and uh, one of the things I told him, I said, we're gonna be talking to you guys about, you know, Ditch Road and, and, and getting some of the, you know, areas done. So this group, this panel is gonna be a good panel. They're gonna start sometime in the new year so, because they still have to appoint other members to the board, but they'll be listening to where they really need to focus their attention on with uh, MTI's uh, issues with highways and, and so forth in the province. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. So some good news and lots of stuff to hear roll out and, and work with the province, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll keep doing the best we possibly can for everybody. With that, uh, that's it for me. One more? I got one last thing to lighten that up a bit, but in keeping up the spirit of council, our direct director has put out a call for help for playgrounds. Yes. We have three absent counselors, and I nominate Mr. Uh, Bob <laughs> to cheer that up for us. I since he is mechanically, that. he's mechanically inclined, and he has equipment and stuff like that. Uh, he is okay. retired. So, so we, we, we will uh, uh, let him know that at our next meeting. So, <laughs> yeah, this is, this, is, this is how things are done. You always want to show up because you never That's know right. what you're going to get. Is that right, <laughs> Counselor Light? I know all about it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, good meeting. So with that, we will move to adjourn. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 7.57 p.m. Moved by uh, Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.